Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Recently I fell down a rabbit hole and rewatched a lot of the shows that I enjoyed as a kid. I needed a little serotonin boost. <laughs> it reminded me how sheltered I was as a kid. In case you couldn't tell from the way I am. I was raised in a very devout Christian household. So naturally my parents were very selective in the type of content I was allowed to consume as a kid. Um, some very notable examples I wasn't allowed to watch include Harry Potter, Wizards of Waverly Place on Disney Channel, uh, Naruto, and um, Yo Gabba Gabba. Uh? Explain that one. I really don't know. So with that being said, a lot of what I watched as a kid was Christian-based shows and movies instead. And most of it sucked. Not because it was religious, but like... After going through everything, I found one specific series I really wanted to talk about. Very near and dear to my heart. It was a huge part of my childhood. A tale as old as time. It does not hold up today. So today we are reliving my childhood and some of my religious trauma by looking back at a show called Bible Man. Now if you're unfamiliar or if you repress this to the darkest part of your minds because I wish I did too, <laughs> Bible Man was a direct-to-video series. Bible Man was a direct-to-video series which starred Willie Ames as Bible Man, who is a superhero that fought evil using the word of God and a lightsaber for good measure. The sword of the spirit. Oh, my bad. Now the synopsis for the series was that there would be villains who would try to poison the youth <laughs> by making them give in to anger or lie to their parents or you know, give in to temptation. What the hell is this guy wearing? Even the worst of all, listening to the radio. God, can't believe they would ever suggest such a thing. Bible Man was there to steer kids in the right direction by beating the shit out of these guys. Now, if you'll believe it, which I don't know if you will, but this series went on for a lot longer than I think people expected it to. I think every era has something in it that needs to be talked about. Get those nostalgia goggles on, you're gonna need them. The Bible Man started in the 90s with the Bible Man show, and it does its best to remind you that this is the 90s. It almost feels like something that would be made now taking place in the 90s. This iteration follows Bible Man's alter ego, Miles Peterson, as a teacher at this school, as well as these kids in his class who are also the worship team at the church. Oh my god, he looks uh... like my grandmother. Now in these episodes, these kids are like the targets of the villains that are trying to poison their minds and whatnot. But first, I want you to check out the tone shift in the intro. Miles Peterson, a man who had it all. Something was lacking. <laughs> then in his darkest hour, the words of a single book began to change his life. Bible. Miles pledged to fight evil in the name of God as Bible Man. I think this scared me into being religious for as long as I was. My god, I don't want to be stuck in the middle of a field during a storm. I guess I should crack open that Bible. I didn't watch these ones a ton as a kid, probably because even I knew that they were bad, or because the Fibbler just scared the shit out of me. The nicest thing I think I can say is that these were a product of their time, through and through. This scene looks like it could have been a 90s PSA on its own. Well, the Bible tells me that you are just like the Apostle Paul. What I am doing, I do not understand. And this one two three <laughs> now re-watching these were a little rough thanks to the shitty effects awkward editing bad dialogue and come a little closer have i got news for you a tiny morsel of gossip it's very juicy vague anti-semitism it was the 90s it also helps that there's only three of these ones technically five episodes in this era but the first two got pulled from syndication and i couldn't figure out why and so i only know about these three and i didn't care to look into the first two because they mean nothing to me and i will say um the lessons that they learn in this show aren't like inherently wrong lessons to learn like they cover you know you shouldn't lie to people uh, you shouldn't spread rumors about people you shouldn't have doubts in yourself or other people those are fine lessons to learn. Like obviously those are good lessons to teach kids, but then you have a guy in a purple suit kicking ass in the name of Jesus. Maybe it's metaphorical. Every day we're fighting demons in this world on our walk with Christ. No, you're arguing with your cousin because they said you should be nicer to gay people. The way that the bad guys like die when they're defeated is the funniest thing ever. Oh, right. You wouldn't dare. I'm a lady! Ah! 
Yes, but the Bible warns against ladies like her. What do you mean by that? Afterwards, the kids learn their lesson for the day. The Bible man goes back to his cave and hibernates. Resting easy knowing that the kids who live and breathe Christianity didn't have somebody's beliefs shoved down their throats. <laughs> Despite having such a rocky start, clearly something resonated with the audiences. So they kicked off a new era of Bible Man. Did it get any better in this new one? Eh. So now we can move past the 90s and the vague anti-Semitism and turn a new leaf in a new century with the Bible Man adventures. And this is where I need to be honest with you guys. I actually kind of like these ones. Now this show is never truly like objectively good by any means. These are very clearly low budget productions that had little to no effort put into them, but there's a batch of episodes in here that I actually thought were fun to watch. Pretty lacking in like comedic jokes before, but they started writing them a lot more and they were very meta and very fourth wall breaking. Like there are even some jokes I didn't know as a kid that I caught as an adult and had me hysterical. Wait a minute boss! I forgot to wet the sponge! Ah! It's almost like they knew these weren't going to be that good, so they just had as much fun as they could with it, and I think that makes it better to watch. We finally meet. What are you talking about? We met like a dozen times. I know, but it was a classic line and I couldn't resist. It's something I like to call artistically bad. It could almost convince you that it was bad on purpose. Finished before you start. You've got to be kidding. I'm a man in spandex. Do I look like I'm kidding? <laughs> almost. Now these episodes get darker, in more ways than one. I'm sorry. In this season, we're introduced to Coates, Bible Man's best friend and tech-savvy sidekick who provides assistance on the field and is a shoulder to lean on, and goddammit, he leaves after three episodes. And he's replaced by Cypher, Bible Man's best friend and tech-savvy sidekick who provides assistance out on the field and is... Huh? We're also introduced to Bible Girl, who looks like this for two episodes, and then like this for the rest of the series. Is she white? Yeah. Is that what I'm seeing? Is this, is this a white girl? Yeah. That's not good. I also want to mention that they bring up Cypher and Bible Girl being like old friends from, was it like a dance crew or something? They never give much background on anybody on these teams, and it kind of makes you wonder what the actual criteria is to join this team. Like, it seems like the only thing you really have to know how to do is read the Bible, and then uh, does God inject you with martial arts or something? I don't know. Yes, it says here you're a third degree black belt in martial arts and tactically trained trained with weapons, you've been in the military for years. It's a very good resume, but you just haven't read your Bible. Get out of my office. The lessons for this era dealt with things like fear, anger, pride, temptation, and how to carry out a torture scene. Now the bad guy for this first batch of episodes were all played by the same guy who turned out to be the final villain, Luxor Spondroff. Until they decide they wanted to kill him off once and for all because they wanted to bring back the anti-Semitism. And this is where I just lost it with this show. Now, I don't know if the writing team changed or if they just decided to stop having fun, but these last few episodes, I just wasn't having as much fun. The jokes were fewer and farther in between, and the ones that they did write were rarely funny. Also, the new opening shows them blowing up the moon in a really shitty animation. <laughs> did Satan want to blow up the moon in the Bible? Did I miss that part? I also think that the wacky protester just annoyed the shit out of me. The ramifications could cause rebellion that would last maybe three or four generations, or, or maybe five, maybe seven generations. You know what? Maybe through all eternity. Wow. Oh, I love this stuff. They wanted the comedic relief to just rely on the wacky protester, but his humor was just, oh, look, I'm wacky and I'm silly and I'm bleh. Because the Bible team got too serious and then he was too crazy and I don't know. Something about it just didn't work for me. The only episode I see worth mentioning with him is the last episode of this entire era, which is called A Fight for Faith. In the intro for this episode, they explain that Miles Peterson has actually stepped down as a Bible man. But now what? He's replaced by this guy, Josh Carpenter. He looks like he gives really good, like, shoulder pats. I appreciate that. Before we get to Josh, though, I have to bring something up. The last episode reveals that the Bible team has, like, a committee and a board of directors that's been funding them the entire time and Cypher and Bible Girl on the team didn't even know they existed. It makes me wonder, did Miles run like them joining the team by the committee? Or was he just allowed to do whatever he wanted? If they're choosing the new Bible man, I feel like they had to have like some say in who joined the team. Whatever, who cares, who cares? So anyways, they've selected a new Bible man and it's this Josh Carpenter. But I really wish they had picked somebody who could act at least a little bit. Hey, we better get to that press conference. 
Are you nervous? No. I'm ready. They put him to work very fast because the wacky protester has one final plan. His plan is to convert kids to atheism by sending them to an alternate dimension without any Bibles, I guess. There are even student leaders here at the Vacation Bible School. But today, they both said they had doubts, that they didn't believe in God or the Bible. I also get to see the alternate dimension. I've never done acid before, but I like to imagine that's kind of what it would be like. That along with the scene where Cypher and the Wacky Protester have a dance-off. I only serve God. I guess Cypher wins the dance-off because they save the kids, lock the Wacky Protester inside the dimension, and stop him once and for all. Well, that sure was colorful, <laughs> but he should have just stuck with crayons. They're fun and non-toxic. Dear God, this guy needs to work on his one-liners. Another era of Bible Man has come and gone, and a new era is beginning. The new Bible team were ready to face the future and continue the fight for faith. But I really wish they didn't. <laughs> Bible Man Power Source was set to introduce a new generation of kids to Bible Man and learning about God's word. I don't know if this had anything to do with the change, but the original company, Pamplin Entertainment, sold the rights to Tommy Nelson, the company who already was like doing the toy line for the show. So with them at least being involved in some capacity in the past, you'd think they would kind of know how to carry the energy, but no the fuck they did not. So have you seen anything suspicious? Yeah, two field lights burned out, some early signs of rust on the field three backstop. And have you ever seen what's in some of this stuff? What I meant was have you seen any enemy activity? If the bar was on the floor, this one would be in hell. <laughs> <laughs> These are really bad. And I know acting was never like the strong suit of Bible Man, but it still feels like it got worse somehow. Do you like hide and seek? <laughs> It right there, Super Pro Game Master 2. I've had just about enough of your tricks. Really? A very unintentional funny moment is in the intro where we learn about Josh's past and um, what led him to God. But the scene just makes it look like God's word turns him into an adult, like instantly, instead of growing up. Why is he like 35, still in like his childhood bedroom? We're also introduced to a new team member, Melody, or as the team calls her, Melody. I think it's kind of dumb that everyone else still has their cool code names and she just has to go by Melody the whole time. Like your code name might as well be your social security number. The only thing I actually liked from these episodes was that one of them had the kid from Talladega Nights in it. Shut up Chip, we do whatever we want you old bad. I think he might be the highest built actor they've ever had in this series. Rewatching these was really tough because a lot of the things I liked before was pretty much gone. They traded in like the meta and fourth wall breaking jokes for more situational comedy and Nobody in this cast seemed to like have a sense of humor. You're sure you're ready? Would you just show us? <sighs> All right. Now, uh, later, 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 okay? You know, it's three against one. We could take him. Uh, okay, okay. Mm. Pretty nice, huh? Except my hair's doing a funny thing. Like, you see it? Like, you know, it pretty much always looks like that. <laughs> There's nothing funny about the Bible or Christianity. Except for the part where you make your kids watch this instead of an actual good show because you think those shows will make them turn satanic. So I think raising your kid watching this makes it more likely they'd become satanic. This era also returned to like the baseline lessons that kids have to learn. Respecting your parents, don't cheat on tests, don't listen to the radio. Hey Bobby, turn the TV off please and call your sister to dinner. I'm busy right now. let your kids use Spotify. Stuff that kids should already be learning anyways, but you're telling them that if they don't do it, then God won't love them or something. I wonder how much they paid this guy to be silver. No matter how much, I bet it wasn't enough. Now, it at least tried something new by putting multiple villains into a single episode. Sometimes it felt really crammed up, and I'm sure it would be overwhelming for a child. Are you telling me I have to learn to respect my parents and not to cheat on tests? This is bullshit. And I will say, this era ends with a bang. 
like a little pop. Like one of the really small ones that like makes a toddler cry. All the villains team up in a final effort to stop them, but as we all know, God's love always finds a way. And I don't know why the fuck we're even surprised anymore. Very hard to describe how bad this is without just watching it. It's like a lifeless shell of something that barely had any legs to stand on before. But with that, the story of Bible Man comes to a close, and we're putting it behind us, we're laying it to rest, you know. It was a nice little thing while it lasted, but I think we need to stop. In 2016, the rights of Bible Man was bought by B&H Kids who were introducing him to another new generation because I promise you, anyone that grew up watching this did not give a shit about it. I didn't even know about these until like a year ago, and I almost didn't include it in the video because I had never seen it and I couldn't find anywhere to watch it for free, and I was not about to spend money to watch it. And now that I've brushed myself up with the animated Bible Man series, I can tell you that these are so bad. These are fucking atrocious. It's very obvious that the new demographic was like preschoolers instead of like kindergartners. And of course, when you're making stuff for that age group, there's some leeway with like having, you know, stellar animation or like very intricate storylines, but you can still make them coherent. Animations look like those cursed like children's YouTube videos where it's like fucking Elsa and Winnie the Pooh dancing. It looks like the really old like educational computer games we would play in elementary school. My guess is that somebody at the company like had a cousin that said they could just do the animation for it. And then this is what they got back and they had to just pretend that it turned out okay. Some of these scenarios are also really fucking weird. Like why is Bible Man presenting a math lead award? This is actually a constant across like the entire Bible Man series that he's just at places and no one ever questions it. He'll do meet and greets with the kids at church. He'll go to schools, uh, town hall meetings, local television, like fucking he goes everywhere in this suit and no one has any questions about it. No one's a little weirded out by that. Okay. Why is that guy in a purple and yellow suit telling my kid to read his Bible? It's, it's a little weird. There's also a scene from an episode where Bible Man is missing and no one knows where he is. The Bible team naturally gives this kid an entire PowerPoint presentation about the life of Jesus as a young adult. That'll help us find him very fast. These episodes were also able to bring back some old villains even though they completely massacred them. The new villains they made were just terrible. This old lady makes kids disrespectful with baked goods, I guess. Or this lady who like makes kids fight with a mysterious crystal that they never explain. Rattened? Rattened? <laughs> who animated that? Oh my god. I thought that Power Source was like the worst they could do, but God found a way. Now this era ran from 2016 to 2020, which I assume they stopped because of that thing that made everybody stop making <laughs> movies and shows. And it says it's still ongoing, but they haven't made any new episodes in two years, so... Maybe it's time that we just hang up the Bible Man mantle for good. I think the biggest question I have looking back on this series is what were they thinking? Like, on paper, I can see it kind of making sense. You know, the superhero trend has always been a thing, and I'm sure that Christians wanted a superhero that they could look up to as one of their own. Because he looks a lot cooler than the other guy. The Bible Man series did spawn like an action figure line, a costume I actually wore for Halloween one year, um, some live videos I think I want to do a separate video about one day, their own Bible Man Bible, which I may or may not be looking into purchasing down the line, and they even had a video game. A perfectly timed deflection will cause the energy bolt to bounce back at the evil henchman, <laughs> causing him to dematerialize. Which I'm sure that was just fine. Now again, this was never truly good, but I really do wish they had stuck with like the meta fourth wall breaking jokes that made it sort of enjoyable because everything before and after those episodes were just so hard to watch. One of the things I really enjoyed in them was just laughing at the bad editing or bad dialogue or acting, everything about it. If you're debating on watching some of the series, don't. But if you don't want to listen to your friend trying to help you out, then I suggest watching Conquering the Wrath of Rage Shattering the Prince of Pride, and Breaking the Bonds of Disobedience. Those are my favorite ones to watch, and I genuinely had a good time watching and laughing and making fun of those. And if you're wanting to just be miserable the whole time, watch any other episode from Bible Man. If you're curious about watching, um, there are still some DVDs I've found in circulation here and there. Um, they're on like thrift websites pretty cheap, it looks like. Um, otherwise, I really don't know. If only there was somewhere that you could type the name into the search bar and just find every episode for free. That that would be really cool if it did, but I I don't know. You have to look into that. Anyways, at the end of the day, as bad as these were, it was still a vital part of my childhood. I'll be forever grateful that it at least entertained me. It almost makes me overlook the religious trauma. Almost. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Growing up, I watched a lot of these low-budget, direct-to-video Christian movies and shows. 
and I'm pretty sure they all suck. If you want to see me cover some more, then make sure you like this video. Make sure you leave a comment telling me if there's any that you can remember that you'd want me to talk about. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. Make sure you check out my socials. It mean the absolute world to me. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you guys next time. So, peace out.